Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome home to our retreatants, our team. Uh, we welcome our guests uh, that are here to support them. I know we got a lot of people here coming to welcome their their husbands and their brothers and their uh, cousins and nephews and grandkids home and uh, thank you and their dad's home. Thank you so much for being here for our online community which is very vast and large and very supportive. A lot of them have been here for the men's and women's retreats. Uh, we're glad you're there. Our Fellowship Center audience, thank you for being a part of what's going on here. Uh, two weeks from, ladies, two weeks from now, this is y'all. So... <clears throat> Two weeks, our ladies will be coming home, and we will uh, we look forward to that as well. Um, and and as and I'll just echo just a couple of things that were said. Uh, the men that were dropped off Thursday are different men that came home last night and this morning. Uh, and that is because uh, you know it's something about being in a moment where the distractions are gone. Uh, the intensity of spirituality, uh, the Holy Spirit can be there, and the sharing of lives. It's amazing what God can do when all the distractions are gone and we lean in. And, and you heard me say that a lot uh, from, from the first night, you know, lean in, lean in, lean in. And I've, I've shared a little bit with the ladies that, uh, in previous stuff, lean in. Uh, and thank you, gentlemen, for leaning in. This weekend, we leaned in. We did more lean in. We die. We dove into, uh, I'm not sure, Brian, is that dove or dived? You know, um, oh, oh no, Rucker doesn't know English. Never mind. The uh, if you if you know, you know. But uh, the uh, we we dove into spiritual warfare and the armor of God, and we didn't we didn't just uh, cover everything in great detail because we'll spend the rest of our lives doing that. But we read six times Ephesians six ten through eighteen, and we camped and lived in that text all weekend. Six times seems like a weird number, doesn't it? Uh, seven, if you're into biblical numerology, is, a, is, is the number of completion. So we're not going to be in Ephesians 6 today, but we're going to read it one more time just to get it complete. How about that? So Ephesians 6, so uh, the rest of us here in the audience and online, this is where we spent our whole weekend. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and powers and the authorities and against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore, since our battle is against that, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, and it will come, you may, may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of, of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can, uh, in addition, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep praying for all the saints. Seven times we got our number completion in uh, that we have read that. One more time to make it complete, and we did. While like I said, we won't be in that text today, we do want to invite all of you into the challenge of what it is to be in a spiritual war. We want to invite you into the challenge of what this text does for us. And keeping along uh, those lines, we're going to be in, in Psalms. We have been since January in the book of Psalms. And it's amazing how many battle songs are in the book of Psalms. And one of those we're going to be in is in Psalm 144. So if you have your Bibles, your phones, whatever you, however you access the Word of God, uh, turn there to Psalm 144. Psalm 144. It is, and we're just going to be in two verses this morning. And we're going to delve into this battle song that David wrote. And he says this, Praise be to the Lord my rock who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. 
He is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield and whom I take refuge, who subdues people under, under my feet. You know, there's a few things as we break this down over the next couple of minutes uh, in this text. One that starts with a battle cry. There's a battle cry. And it's basically, praise be to the Lord, my rock. You know, all, all teams... All teams have a fight song. You know, they have a little, little hype music going on before a game. If you've been to games, uh, at every level, uh, there, there's, there's hype music. And it, 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 it starts. It starts with, okay, I can hear it. You kind of start tapping your feet. You get it? And then you, then you start, then you start bobbing your head there, kind of looking like a wobblehead, some of you, if you can't do it. Uh, and then you start doing that. And if you're like me, you're like, you can't do all that at the same time. So you just kind of start doing this. <laughs> yeah. And you start, yeah. And then, and then you just do that build up. And there's something about a fight song, about hype music that really, that really makes you start going there. Doesn't it? Uh, and, and, and I can hear it now. Uh, you, you, can, you can just start tapping your feet when you hear a song. and you, It just does something inside of us. Worship is our battle song. That is our fight song. When we go into that world and the enemy is out there, we have a fight song and it's worship. It motivates us. It declares who's, where our allegiance is. And we sing and say out loud that we're on the Lord's side. And praise be to the, the Lord, my rock. That's where I stand. That's the, that's the team I am on. That's why all our battling needs to involve worship. That's why our preparation for battle in your quiet times, in your alone time, in your groups with people, needs to involve some level of worship. And that's, that's a whole lot easier to do than it used to be sometimes. You take, you take your earbuds, you put them in, and you press play on YouTube music or Spotify or whatever it is, or if you're old like I am and I, th I hear cassettes are making a comeback, you put it in, you hit play, and you just go. Let it go. It is part of it. That's why it's got, worship is such a big part of what we do. God lives in the praise of his people, Psalm 22 says. Psalm 100 says when we enter his presence, we do it with worship. In fact, we get this picture in Isaiah that whenever Isaiah was brought to the presence of God, there's all these creatures, there's angels, there's all these other crazy critters going around his throne. And, he, and, he, and they're saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. And it's almost like, okay, this is how we enter his presence. Because when we say we're entering the presence of a holy God, we need to remember we're entering the presence of a holy God. And that's scary as it should be, but it's also inviting and when we enter with worship, we enter with the right frame of mind. And we, end, we enter with our, in, a, in a vulnerable position with knees bowed, with heads bowed, and hands up. Whatever the position is, we do it humbly. And that is where we find our motivation. That's where we find our fight song. And the enemy cannot abide in the presence or the worship of God. And gentlemen, have we worshiped this weekend? And, and as I sit on this, on this front pew this morning, I looked at Will and I, there was a couple of songs. It felt like things were rattling. And that's what happens when, when 40, 50, 60 men get together in a section and we start worshiping. Was it contagious to the rest of the room? Man, you can't help but worship. Amen. Give glory to God for that. There is a worship song. We have a fight song. And our fight song, our battle song, is worship to God. There's another part to this here in this psalm. There's also a training for battle. Not just a, a, a fight song or a, or, or a battle song. There's a training for battle. Look here at the last part of verse 1. Who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. Now, there's going to be some things that are familiar to this group right here because you heard me say it this weekend. But there's several points to be made from this text, from this little part of the text. One, we're in a battle. If you don't recognize the battle that you're in, you're vulnerable. 
If you deny the battle, it's a dangerous place to be. Oh, there's no battle. There's no danger. We're fine. Woo-hoo. Watch out. It's a dangerous play. We have an enemy. And he, ra- he prowls around, Peter says, like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And let's be clear who the enemy is. The enemy, you, your people are not your enemy. The people you're in conflict with, the people that have rubbed you the wrong way or whatever, they're not your enemy. Addiction is not your enemy. Pornography is not your enemy. Cynicism and negativity is not your enemy. Anger and resentment is not your enemy. These are manifestations of how the enemy attacks vulnerabilities in your life. There are strategies that we use to help us learn how to manage impulses, desires, learn better interaction, tendencies that we have in our life, recognizing where we've been hurt, recognizing vulnerabilities. Those, there's, there's things we do in our emotions, in our minds that help us. However, if that's all the strategies we use, then we are only, we're limited in our battle. If we don't recognize that it is a spiritual battle, that it is an attack from the enemy, and we don't fight on that front, then we're fighting with one hand behind our back. And we have been empowered to fight on a spiritual level. Our enemy is not the things that we can see, our enemy is Satan and his host. And if he can get us distracted from himself to a physical manifestation of the attack instead of on the attacker, then we are distracted warriors. If he can get us focused on our behavior and doing better rather than growing in righteousness, then we're fighting a battle by our own willpower and not the Holy Spirit's power. And what I'm saying is, yes, I go to learn to how to handle where your eyes fall and in and, and, and the temptations in our life. When those emotions come up and hijack us, learn how to use things in, in our minds and use people around us. But don't forget that the battle starts on our knees, worshiping God, praying to God, because it is a battle from the enemy that he is attacking us. And those are manifestations. Our battle is different. The battle we fight is in the spiritual realm. realm. Therefore, the weapons we fight with are very different. Ephesians 6, we just read, we battle with truth. We battle with righteousness. We battle with faith. We battle with peace. We battle with the Word of God and the confidence in our salvation. That's the whole point of the armor, to be well equipped. And our growth in Him, when we come and we be, are raised, and we've got several people that are going to be raised to walk a new life here in just a little bit. One was last night. In fact... <clears throat> And when we're raised to walk a new life with him, we're taking those baby steps. And, we, and, as we, and we're not maybe not too good at, at the word of God. And we're not so good with our, the helmet of salvation. And we're not even sure this, this shield of faith may be a little heavy and it may be a little cumbersome. But as we walk and, and, and our feet get fitted with, with the gospel of peace and we learn to manage, and we learn to do that, and we grow in him. It is literally growing in righteousness so that we know how to use the armor that we've been equipped with. That is what happens when we grow. We, we are not ill-equipped. We have everything, as Peter said, that we need for life and godliness. However, if we slough off in our training, in our maturity, in our growth, it's a dangerous position to be in if we don't know how to use our armor. Well, there's not only a victory song and, and, uh, that we have, and we're not, it's not only just training for battle, but this text also says there's a victory to claim. Look here in verse 2. He is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold, my deliverer, my shield, and whom I take refuge, who subdues people under me. We fight, my brothers and sisters, we fight a battle that's already been won. And we live in that period of the victory is won, 
but it's being realized as we grow. Listen to this. Listen, listen to the wording. He is my loving God. Love will cause you to fight longer than fear. How many of you moms and dads and brothers and sisters have fought long and hard for your children or your siblings because of maybe the things in this world have really beat them down? And you've sacrificed and you've been on your knees and you've given up money and you've gone broke before it. Why? Because you love. And how many of us who are parents, when our kids are suffering and when they're hurting, whatever it is, would rather, and I can remember this as one of the very distinct things, when I would have an earache as a child, when something was hurting, and my mother would say, these, I wish I could hurt for you. That's what love does. Love will fight longer. Love will fight harder than fear. Eventually my fear takes over and I'm, I'm out of here. Love keeps us there. And that is what it is. As Derek said at the beginning, 39 more brothers that will stand there and love through all the way through the battle. And that is what we do. That's what God does. And he puts his love in us so we can do that for each other. Not only that, he is our fortress. He is our stronghold. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon against us will prosper. No matter that flaming arrow that comes, no matter that subtle deception that comes in, it can't prosper when we have the armor of God, when we are in the fight for him. Because it's a battle that's already won. He is one who delivers and protects. Colossians 1, I love it, says, He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son He loves, where we have redemption and where we have forgiveness of sins. The battle has already been won through the death and resurrection of Jesus. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us through the Holy Spirit. Now we are warriors to claim, to fight, and reclaim territory and lives which the enemy has taken. It's his battle. It's always been his battle. Listen to this. When a defenseless Hebrew nation saw Egyptians as they left the Egyptian army that pursued them, Moses said to them in Exodus 14, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance of the Lord will bring today. The Egyptians you see today, the sin you see today, the, the attack of the enemy you see today will never be seen again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. That is his battle to fight. Again, when David was attacked by the Philistines, he was told to wait. This is in 1 Samuel or 2 Samuel. The, told to wait until he heard the sound of marching in the tops of the poplar trees. Move quickly because that will mean the Lord has gone out in front of you to strike the Philistine army. The Lord, it's his battle and he has gone out in front of us. Then there is this terrifying yet comforting ver picture of Jesus found in Revelation 19. And John got this glimpse behind the curtain that we all long to see and will see one day. I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like the blazing fire and his head on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood and his name is the word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on a white horse and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth was a sharp sword which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress with fury. On his robe and on his thigh he has the name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That is a picture of victory. That is our king. That is the one who goes out before us. That is whose side we're on. It's his battle, and he has won it. We're on the winning side. We want to end with a battle that's recorded in 2 Corinthians, or 2 Chronicles uh, 20. We want to invite our worship team to come on back up. There are two armies that came together to fight against the king and God's people. The king was Jehoshaphat, who had led his people in, in success for a long time. And, uh, but now these two armies had come together against him. 
And they were scared. And Jehoshaphat took all the people of the nation and they went to the temple of God and they said this before the Lord. We have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the priests, and he said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. You ever feel like you're looking up at a vast army that's attacking you? Remember these words. The battle is not yours, but God's. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions. Stand firm. See the deliverance the Lord will give you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow. Tomorrow's Monday. Go out and face this vast army tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Then the king did this. The next day, he went down to fight this vast army. And then he did this. The king appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army. Who do you put out in the front of your army? You put the worshipers. You sing praises to God and you worship that's your battle song. And they sang, Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. And as they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the armies who were invading him, and they were defeated. When we praise God, when we let that go in front of us, then we understand this battle song. Praise be to the Lord my rock who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. He is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold, my deliverer, and my shield. And whom I take refuge, who subdues people under my feet. It's his battle. He's fought it. We claim a victory. One young man, I got a call yesterday afternoon during our retreat, who was at another retreat. Uh, men's retreat over uh, that the uh, Richland Parish churches had gone together and had. And uh, his mother called me and said he wanted to be baptized and wanted me to do it. And um, Austin's with us today um, for our return service. And and I hadn't connected with Austin in a while. And uh, tragedy uh, just a couple of months ago brought us together. Um, and while tragedy, as we said yesterday, while tragedy brought us together a couple of mo months ago, uh, victory brought us together yesterday. There's going to be, and, and I don't know if you understand all the ins and outs about the tragedy that he and his family have faced, but we do understand the victory that is in the gospel. And that's what he claimed. We've got several men that are going to do that today. And they're going to head on back here. Uh, and we're going to, we offer this invitation to respond to Jesus. Um, to, to respond to the victory that the gospel provides. And so if you need that, if you need that victory in your life, whether, whether you're, you're uh, uh, coming to Jesus for the first time, or if you're like Blake, you're ready for the joy to be found in your life again. Uh, that is the, what this time is for. And so several of these guys are going back and they're going to be baptized this morning. And if you, if you need that, or if you need prayers, we're going to have a response team, our bell team that was uh, there this weekend. Some of our, our elders, our, our director team will be here to receive you and pray for you. Um, whatever the need is, you, you make that happen while we stand and sing.